Hello, hello, hello. Hello, I um, hate, to, hate to interrupt your fun, but I just want to say a couple things, if you will. And then Jeanette wants to say a couple things. First of all, it's great to see you here. It's so great to see everybody here. And uh, Shannon's family, so great to see you here. And the people who came in from out of town, so glad you made it to share this with us. I just got one uh, thing to say about Danny and Shannon. Is when I first thought they were meant to be together. They started doing this woodworking and making, using wood and making things. And they, they teamed up on it. And they made me uh, bags, you know, carnival thing with, with the wood and put Elvis on it, which is cool. And then they made me a, a pool stick holder that attached to the wall with a volcano on it. But, but they were telling me as they're making this stuff and working together, they'd be singing together. And I just thought that was so cool. I don't know if it's harmony or back and forth, but I just thought that whole idea is so cool, them singing together and getting along so well together. It reminded me actually of a seven, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. There's some, a, a whistling we will go or something like that. But these guys are singing instead of whistling. <laughs> so. To use one of the dwarfs' names, Happy, I'm wishing Dan and Shannon many happy years of marriage. So here's to you guys. So um, anyway, um, I just wanted to say a word about um, uh, the kind of uh, character that Dan and Shannon have. Um, so, Dan, you know, is very, uh, athletic, but, <laughs> and very focused about sports and such, but, um, when, when these days would go see him in Hot Shots, he would always come over and say, hi, mama, and give me a hug, and he has these little laugh wrinkles that are cute, <laughs> but Dan has always shown great um, love and respect for Dave and I. And that's something that we appreciate ever since he was a little boy, uh, even until now. He's not too big to come over and say hi, Mama. And, uh, I love you, Mom. Yeah, I love you, too. <laughs> and some, and uh, he played ball at uh, uh, Brentwood. And uh, you know, there's this big hill and there's a railroad track and then there's a hill going down. And Dan would always take my hand and help me get back over to the other side of the parking lot. And, and so that's the character that I'm talking about is uh, respect and love, respect and kindness. That's part of, of who Dan is. And, uh, and Shannon, when, when we got to meet her, we, we loved her right away. And I've always witnessed in Shannon um, just love, kindness, and patience. You know, there's a scripture, I don't know if they'll use it tomorrow, but love is patient, love is kind. And that's what Shannon's been to Dan from day one until today. <laughs> love, love you guys. And those are, those are uh, qualities that are good, that are essential in a marriage. And if you add faith to that, you know, you're unshakable. And so, very happy for you. Uh, don't worry, not everyone has to have three pages of notes. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for coming to the surprise early birthday party for Shannon's dad. <laughs> Next week, baby. <laughs> Happy birthday, Big Mike. <laughs> A real thank you for everyone for coming out tonight and uh, everyone who's helping make this wedding great. I'd like to highlight a few. My parents for this rehearsal dinner. And uh, every time I say someone, if everyone just claps, it makes it. It makes the speech seem better. <laughs> so 
You guys didn't have to do it, thanks. Uh, for my parents for uh, throwing this awesome rehearsal um, and for showing me what a, um, a great marriage is and raising us to be, um, hopefully, as good as you guys <laughs> wanted. <laughs> and so, yeah, thank you guys so very much. Uh, for both of our parents, for their generosity and making it possible to create the wedding that we've always wanted. Um, so it would have been uh, difficult to pull off everything that we were hoping to without, with, with, without their help. So thank you very much. Uh, to Brooke. comes through in the clutch in most big Dan and Shannon moments. Everything from helping pull off the engagement party, throwing a bridal shower, to making personalized groomsmen and bridesmaids gifts, and much more. You guys are about to get them, don't worry. <laughs> Number four. <laughs> Sorry, random thing that only those get them. Uh, Wanda for throwing the awesome uh, bridal shower for Shannon and I and everyone else who was in, in, involved with that and um, it, it looked like it was awesome. So, round, round of applause for the back center. For Nicole. So fiercely loving Shannon. I use that word um, deliberately. Uh, <laughs> fiercely loving Shannon, always looking out for her and for sending a very timed, a very well timed message to me that eventually led to where we are today. Or Samantha. <laughs> for somehow getting us a free photo shoot at an Aldi store <laughs> and allowing us the opportunity become, to become internet famous. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, to my sister Lisa for designing and creating all of the customized signs that we'll be using during both the ceremony and reception tomorrow. <laughs> you have sufficiently paid us back for those damn bamboo wall dividers that we made for you. <laughs> to my brother Eric. <laughs> for copying my hairstyle <laughs> and making me feel like a trendsetter. <laughs> you look great. <laughs> To Will Metzner hey. for managing my SEP IRA. <laughs> Some people say don't feel obligated to invite him just because he handles your SEP IRA, and I say no. <laughs> I like Will. <laughs> to Andrew Miller. For almost bowling a 600 series at the Epiphany Friday Night Men's League. <laughs> Maybe next year, big guy. <laughs> <laughs> to Kelly Casey. For consistently... For consistently bowling 600 series all the time. Share with Andrew what it's like. set myself up bad for when you guys get the mics. Uh, okay, back, back to normal. Uh, to all of Shannon's family uh, for welcoming me into the family and always treating me so well. And finally, for Shannon. For Boo Boo. 
for always being there for me no matter what, uh, for being my best friend, who uh, has shown me what the true meaning of love is, and the way that you act towards me, and So, uh, funny, funny little thing, uh, love is patient and love is kind, that uh, is in my speech too, Mom. Uh, <laughs> but I thought about ways to talk about Shannon um, repeatedly, what came up to me is uh, just the word love, um, and I kept going back to that saying, love is patient, love is kind, and every time in that phrase that you just put in Shannon, it is spot on. Shannon is patient, she is kind, she does not envy, she does not boast, except when she's showing off a great deal, she got at all these. <laughs> uh, she does not dishonor others, she's not self-seeking, she is not easily angered, she keeps no record of wrongs, uh, she does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. Uh, she always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres, and uh, love never fails. Yeah. And I should probably stop there because I don't think I can top that. Uh, <laughs> So uh, the actual thing my mom wanted everyone to do is just share a one to two minute Dan and Shannon story. You don't have to have an amazing speech like I did, so. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone, uh, I am Sam, and I've known Shannon since seventh grade, yeah. and we've been Fiesta partners ever since. Um, and the best Shannon and Dan story that I have to share is um, when I was in the process of moving from Arizona to Portland, I had packed all my stuff for my movers to come, and then I had a week before I had to actually leave that apartment. So I had a week without any things in an apartment. And one of the things I didn't have was a corkscrew for my wine. And that was detrimental to me. So I did, um, for the first time, meet some of my neighbors to ask for a corkscrew. Uh, I did get it, everything worked out. But during this process of me worrying I would not come up with a corkscrew, Dan informed me that he is capable of opening a bottle of wine with a shoe. <laughs> <laughs> to which I said, BS. <laughs> and, uh, that, I let that lie, and then my birthday came around, and I get the most amazing video of Dan wishing me a happy birthday and opening a bottle of wine with a shoe, ladies and gentlemen. I was so excited, I was looking for a video picture frame so I could put this on my wall and keep it forever, at which point, Shannon informed me that they had had multiple attempts and also opened that bottle with a corkscrew before Dan had actually used the shoe. So these two, these two straight up colluded to gaslight me on my birthday. And if that isn't the basis of a solid relationship, I don't know what is. I really don't. So love you guys. I have all of the videos, which I will keep forever and show to your children. So thank you. Love you guys so much. I hate doing speeches, but here we are. Um, I'm Shannon's cousin, Julia. Um, so I remember when Shannon first met Dan, and they met at Club Fitness, because Shannon was staring at Dan <laughs> because of his shirt, kickball. Um, 
Shannon and I talked about it a lot, and I had to convince her to go on this date, and thank God I did. <laughs> because she was not into it after the many dates that we both had been on. <laughs> it was a little, a lot. For both of us, I meant. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm so happy that she did, because she met an amazing person. And I'm so happy that S man met her, her Dan man, because I'm J-Dog, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, I'm so happy that you guys met each other, because you guys are the perfect couple, and you're going to make the perfect life together. And I'm so happy for you. Initiated when Jeanette spanked me in the seventh grade. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I definitely deserve it. <laughs> but you know, Eric went to five different colleges in four different years, and during that time, Danny and I became close, and we got we got to know each other. We went to uh, we lived together. We were in a band together. We were teammates, and so all the rumors, everything you've heard about Danny is true. That not only is he good at everything, but he's also the sweetest kindest and the nicest, and as Jeanette said, just kind to everyone and acknowledging of everyone, which is wonderful, except when you're in a band together and you're trying, as I was, to be cool and to pick up girls, you know, <laughs> and to do the whole like rock star persona where I was like brooding and moody and like trying, you know. Meanwhile, Danny would just like stand on the stage and just be like, oh, Colin's here. Oh, hey, Colin, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, oh, you yeah. uh, know. There was a show when Danny asked his mom in between songs, because of course, Jeanette came to every single show, uh, he asked his mom for a glass of water in between songs. And if there is anything less rock star than asking your mom for a glass of water in between songs, and then she can you know, and he's like, thanks, mom. <laughs> I just, I want to share one really quick story. So many of you guys, you saw the all the ad, um, but believe it or not, this is not Danny Kins' first uh, brush with with uh, local infamy in the news. In fact, Danny was actually on local news maybe 10, 12 years ago. I don't. Know. Anyway, real quick, Highway 40 right by Hampton, they expanded for whatever reason to five lanes. And that very far right lane went into the, uh, went into the divider, you know, all the way. We don't need to go there. We don't need to go there. <laughs> anyway, so Danny's had a quick trip, getting lunch as he did every day, you know, and uh, a news crew was there interviewing motorists about uh, the expansion of Highway 40. And Danny gave them a very thoughtful and like 10 minute, 15 minute long interview on camera telling them about how it affects his commute and you know, and the potholes and everything like that. And so we're, later that night we're all sitting there and we're watching the news and Danny's very excited. He told us he's gonna be on the news and we're watching it and he, he's sure that they're going to feature his entire interview. And so finally during the segment they cut to it just a couple of different people speaking about how the highway is affected. And then finally, they cut to Danny. And you know on the bar at the bottom it says, disgruntled motorist? And the only thing it said is, he's like, yeah, you drive all the way in the right lane, and it goes, Grrr. And then it just cuts. <laughs> you know, and the anchor is just like, thank you for that story. But yes. Danny is unabashedly and only, and he cannot help but being himself, and it's the most wonderful person. Um, I love you guys. Shannon, you're perfect for each other. Um, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Um, hi, my name's Nicole, or Little Nicole, I think, to a lot of the <laughs> crew here. Um, my story is really short, but I had my very best birthday I've ever had, thanks to these two right here. And it was April 2020, right in the middle of the pandemic. 
I was driving from Colorado to Illinois and I stopped in St. Louis for the night and I don't think these two had planned at all to give me an awesome birthday but um, we went out to dinner and Dan like decorated the whole place with like smoke machines and like lights and balloons and and like it was like an impromptu trip and like we like danced and played Boozy Clue and we like played Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, which I think some of you got phone of friends that night <laughs> from our pandemic, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Um, and it was just like the best impromptu birthday I've ever had. And you guys, I mean, it's a testament to you guys and how you don't even have to plan together. You just can make that stuff work. So cheers to you guys. Um, Nancy, Danny's aunt, and, and um, no, there's a sweet story. I, I do remember a few a couple summers ago, or when Danny was playing with his band, and you you were playing that song with a Tennessee whiskey, and Shannon was up, you know, watching. It was just so sweet. <laughs> You quit, you quit singing the song, and you came down and danced with Shannon in the park, you know, right on the patio, while the band kept playing. I just thought that was so sweet. And then afterwards, you went back up on the stand and, and finished a song, but I just thought that was sweet. Yeah, you know, coming down and dancing with, with Shannon. Anyway, but yeah, 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 you were holding your little dog, I think. And, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, congratulations, and yeah, tomorrow's going to be a great day. God bless. Hey. Okay, so I'm Curtis. I met Dan first in, in 2015. We were playing uh, softball in Brentwood, and my wife and I became friends with Dan and Chin. Uh, you know, for, for quite some time, we'd be playing, you know, out at Brentwood. We had a six o'clock game in the middle of summer, right? And so. We hang around after that six o'clock game, and they'd be turning the lights off on us at 11, 11.30 at night after the game got done at seven o'clock. So uh, imagine what kind of fun that we had, you know, during that time. So, uh, so then a after that, you know, uh, we got to be friends. We got to hang out at uh, Del Norte Avenue, and our dogs got to be friends. As a matter of fact, I remember uh, some some dog races that took place. And, dog birthday parties and, and all of that and so that was that was just wonderful and all that and so um life happened right and, and things went on and uh so you know i i got some news uh while dan and i who you know during covid i was playing disc golf with danny and, and all this and you know and we, we were oh, excuse me sorry uh, so eventually, I finally found out, and Dan got to uh, you know one of the holes we were playing disc golf, and he finally said, "Yeah, you know I'm not gonna be playing a whole lot of disc golf uh, for a while now." And I said, well, "Dan, that doesn't sound like you. Why not?" I said, "Well, I got some good news." And I looked at Dan, and I came up and I gave him the biggest hug and biggest smile. I'm like, "Are you kidding me?" Heck yes, let's go, you know. And so uh, I just I just think about all those times that we had at your house and everything like that and all the great times we had. But the best time that we had there was just a few months ago when you guys walked in after your, your big engagement. I was just so honored and, and proud to be, uh, you know, a part of that and to, you know, kind of follow you guys all on this journey. And, um, you know, true love really does find a way, and I, and I think that it really, really did. So I, I'm beyond honored and, and happy to be a part of it, and I'm so, so happy for you guys. So, cheers. Hi, I'm Drew. I have nothing good to say about Dan. <laughs> um, me and Dan knew each other in high school. We lived together for six years and uh, I think actually my favorite stories of uh, Dan and Shannon don't involve Dan it's just when he walks away and me and Shannon make fun of him behind his back. <laughs> uh, no actually my, my I think my one of my favorite stories is it actually doesn't involve Shannon it's uh, me and Dan went of course disc golfing and uh, <laughs> placidly 
and uh, he, you know, starts talking about Shannon and what he's doing, what he's planning with his life, and we're good friends, so we always come to each other with problems or big events, and uh, he, he's like, you know, I think, I think I'm going to probably ask Shannon to marry me, and I was like, you know what, Dan? She could do a lot better. <laughs> Uh, no, I was like, I was like, Dan, I really, I was like, yeah, like, duh, like, I, when, <laughs> I was like, you guys, when I first met Shannon, like, me and Dan lived together, so, you know, you always, somebody brings a girl back, you think, now I gotta pretend to like her, you gotta be nice, and it was never a problem with Shannon, she was always awesome, the whole time, and so when he's like, I'm gonna marry her, I was like, yeah, that, like, I always thought of you guys as, like, you were, the couple that was going to get married. I didn't even question it. It was just gonna happen. And then, uh, then of course, he did. And I, I couldn't be happier for you guys. Like, you know, I'm. You guys are a couple that I actually like, that I actually care about. You're <laughs> I, I am invested. Uh, but yeah, I'm. I'm very happy for you guys. I was worried this was going to happen, so I did write some stuff down. Uh, uh, I, uh, I managed Dan's step IRA. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I've known Dan since third grade. Uh, Dan and his family have always been really good to me. I just want to take this time to thank you for that. Uh, when we were younger, I was pretty klutzy. Still am to this day. Anyway, it was about seventh or eighth grade. And uh, it was a Pitt Days homecoming. And um, a group of us, we were playing basketball. And it was a house that wasn't too far away from, uh, from Epiphany. And what happened was, uh, I was losing significantly in that basketball game. And so halfway through the game, I purposely rolled my ankle very bad. Uh, to the point where I couldn't walk on it at all. Um, so, as I'm going through all this pain, I started thinking, you know, I'm pretty bummed that um, I'm not going to be able to join in the fun of the festivities of the Epiphany Homecoming. Because, any of you know, the Epiphany Homecoming is the highlight of everybody's year. <laughs> so, um, Dan, along with a couple other of our buddies, basically carried me back to the Kuntzes, um that night and because I couldn't walk on my foot and all of them cut out on the homecoming night um, to keep their buddy who couldn't walk anymore company um, and that's the type of the uh, type of the guy Danny is um, he's the type of guy who would he, you'd want by your side in battle he's the type of guy who you know you'd, you'd never leave a friend behind um, yeah he's, he's a great guy well, and you're telling me you fake that shit? I did. <laughs> <laughs> so, as many of you know, Dan is basically good at everything he puts his mind to. Um, I, unfortunately, I haven't been able to spend much time with Shannon, but in the short time that I have, it looks like he's also good at choosing life partners. Cheers. Cheers.
<laughs> okay, and then we planned this big party. It was very last minute, everyone. Um, but you threw it together, and you did it great, and I just love you too as a couple. I also love that you're in our family now. You make things a lot better. I've gotten very close to both of you, especially Shannon. <laughs> You've been amazing to me. You know, you've been my sister for a while. Everything you've helped out with, everything you've helped out with um, my way and the way you guys went above and beyond. Um, and Dan, I'm so excited that you went on the journey you did and you um, made the decision and decided to choose Shannon because it was a no-brainer. But you know, let's <laughs> get there. Um, but I think above all, you guys might not know this, but Shannon, with our group of friend, uh, family, has a nickname. She's actually Shan Dog. <laughs> Shan Dog. Yeah. I've known Danny for just ever. I mean, so long that we can, or 
we're getting old enough to like say decades now, even it's been so long. Uh, I mean, the earliest memories go back to you know staying up all night watching Dumb and Dumber on repeat, which I think all of our parents just loved us being up until 6 a.m. Uh, watching movies uh, back in grade school, and then throughout the years, um, all the different memories. Uh, I don't have a particular story because there's been too many uh, over the years. But if, if there's one thing like that I would think of when I think of Danny, uh, that we, we touched on like, the kindness, uh, how he's always looking out for the other people, like Will said here. But I look at it and I see just uh, an overall enthusiasm for life. Um, and then the second I met Shannon, uh, I, I saw that same thing. Um, and then there's a quote, uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson, it's nothing great was ever accomplished without enthusiasm. And you guys, you guys are great, and I love you, and congratulations. Yes, I will drop the Ralph Waldo quote. That's not the problem. I don't do speeches. My bowling scores are average. <laughs> I'm told I have the form. So here's one more thing you'll kick my ass at, which is being a great husband. So I love you guys. Yeah. Congratulations, Gateway for tomorrow. Well, my name is Eric. I'm his uh, brother. Uh, when we first met Shannon, we fell in love with her from day one. And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> but yeah, we love Shannon from. Uh, the first day we met her, and I'll say a few more things about her tomorrow, but that's a secret. <laughs> I'm Bob. I'm uh, Danny's uncle, and uh, 
I've known Danny since he was zero years old. Uh, and I know he's competitive in his sports. He loves it. Loves Shannon, and I know that. And there was a time, I don't, I don't know what it was, Dan. We had Dan over the house three or four times fixing our appliances. It wasn't a washer, it was a dryer or a refrigerator. And uh, I think it was the one of the times, and Dan, I don't remember exactly, it was two, three years ago. And I said, hey, how are you and Shannon doing? And Dan told me, he says, oh, we ain't seen each other right now. So. I don't know if you, I don't know if those stories you broke up or what. And I said, what, are you kidding me? I said, she was perfect for you. So I, I don't know if you remember, but I kept trying to talk to you. And I said, Dan, don't let her get away. You know, so maybe I said something to you and you came back. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the thing I want to emphasize, like Jeanette said, uh, respect, Dan's got total respect. Whenever he sees me and Liz, my wife, total respect. You know? and, uh, He's always mild-mannered, and uh, in fact, I've never seen Dan get mad at all. Just, uh, of course, I don't see it a whole lot, but uh, anyway, but I, we wish you the best, your marriage, you and Shannon, and I know it'll work out for you. And as a matter of fact, Dan, the uh, refrigerator works now. The light comes on. <laughs> it's kind of, kind of a long story, you know. He came over to fix the refrigerator because the light turned out. He spent over an hour trying to fix it and couldn't do it. You know, he said, uh, it's probably some circuit breaker. It's going to cost, like, I think he said, like, 400 bucks. I said, oh, forget it. We'll just... The LED light driver. Yeah, we'll just... The freezer section will become as it says. Yeah, we'll just, live in, we'll just uh, open the refrigerator in the dark. But anyway, a couple months ago, it's time to come back on now. So Dan is on. Uh, <laughs> so I wish you the best. Can't wait till tomorrow night. And, uh, I've been racking my brain for a story, and I cannot think of one because my whole life has been spent with Shannon, the entire life. And I mean, when we were kids, we grew up wanting to be Disney princesses. That dream didn't come true. Neither one of us became a Disney princess. Um, but we used to ride bikes around the neighborhood all the time. Scooters with Carissa back there, who's also trying to be quiet. <laughs> Popping fences to get to each other's houses, ballet classes. All of my firsts have been with Shannon. My first, my first dates, piano lessons. I, I mean, everything. Learning to ride a bike. I mean, I was at your house every day, or she was at mine. Denise is my mom. But now to see you go through this, it's so fun and exciting. And I'm not going to get emotional because that's tomorrow's speech. <laughs> but, I just wanted to say how much we love Shannon. And Dan, we're so excited for you, and my kids couldn't be more excited for this. My sweet Kennedy, when we came out here a couple years ago, we went to a um, Cardinals game, and it was probably negative 50 outside. But Dan and Kennedy stood there and cheered for several innings. Let's go, Cardinals, let's go. So here's Dan with this cute little six-year-old girl on his hip, and she was probably the loudest fan in the stadium. Yeah. And after that, I knew that he was a keeper for Shannon. And we love him. Welcome to our family. <laughs> Uh, so my name is Ryan. Nobody knows me here, so it's my first time to rehab. Ryan. 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 We know you now. <laughs> now you know me. But uh, I've uh, been the one uh, supporting, fiercely supporting Nicole and her love for Shannon over the years. <laughs> but uh, no. Uh, I'm not allowed to tell that story. <laughs> we don't talk about Bruno. But um, no, I don't like Diet Coke at all. Like it, it just tastes really gross to me, really nasty. But Shannon is the only reason that we keep our fridge stocked with Diet Coke. Uh, and, and Shannon lived with us briefly while she was in school uh, for about a month. And Nicole was working at the time. And Shannon and I would stay up late and we would watch Netflix or and shows or whatever. And, we still have season six of House of Cards to watch, so you getting married doesn't change that. Okay. We just gotta figure out time. But, uh, you know, and, and getting to know Dan, like it's just been uh, a lot of fun, and I can see the love that you guys have for each other, and I'm just very excited for you guys, and excited for tomorrow. So, congratulations.
Am I looking good? Yeah. My favorite thing about Dan is pretty much uh, a couple times a year I'll get a, I'll get a message from Dan and it'll, it'll say something like this. Hey, I know this is really late notice, but uh, will you come film this for me? <laughs> and I love Dan so much, I can't say no. Ever. But I love you guys both together. You guys are fantastic. Uh, can't wait for tomorrow. So uh, congratulations, guys. All right, I got one more. One of these occasions that Dan asked me to shoot something on very short notice was the night before his engagement. <laughs> I get a call and Dan asks me to come out and shoot some photos. And I say, absolutely. So uh, we get there about six o'clock to shoot these pictures. It is nice, it is bright outside. But Dan, Dan does not show up <laughs> until about nine o'clock and it's pitch dark. So I'm hiding behind a car, jumping up every three seconds to try and catch Dan's signal, which we cannot see because it's dark. And there, uh, there was supposed to be a guitarist walk up, play music. We were supposed to walk up and catch the moment of the engagement, but it was so dark, we could not see anything. <laughs> and that just goes to show that Dan needs Shannon for her, organ her organizational skills. <laughs> what about tonight, guys? I got a call at 5 o'clock tonight to come here. <laughs> My name's Carissa, and um, I've known Shannon. She'll tell you since we were five. I'm going to tell you since we were four, but we still go in the argument, but it's fine. I'll let it slide. Um, and then obviously, Nicole, too. We grew up in the same neighborhood together, and we all just would like hop each other's fences. And, all of my childhood memories is us three, and it's just so surreal being here with everybody. Even her husband was in our neighborhood as well, and it was just, it's crazy. So anyways, I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, damn, I live in Arizona, and I really don't have this crazy, awesome story about Shannon and Dan, other than recently, I come out to visit Shannon, and she's like, hey, do you want to go to Dan's, like, uncle's anniversary? I'm like, sure. Why not? I'd love to go. And in the meantime, obviously, I'm trying to understand who Dan is, and I'm like, you know, you guys are getting pretty serious, and I don't know shit about you, so I need to figure this out. So I'm like, this will be a good test. I'll be the black sheep of this, you know, anniversary thing, and we'll go. And uh, I walked in there with no expectation whatsoever. Um, and I can tell you that experience, all of his family members, including Dan, they made me feel so welcome. As soon as I walk into the door, they're all greeting me, one asking me questions, and just it felt like home, like it was just this, this warmth. Um, and then let's not forget, Dan just breaks out in an Elvis song and start singing, and he sounds like Elvis in real life. And I'm like, what is what's going on here? So I was like, okay, all right, he's, he's going up. He's getting up on my list, okay. And then we go to this after party, and I'm like, oh my god, there's like NBA jams in real life. It's on, like, Donkey Kong. I'm like, we'll see if I whoop his tail in this game, because, like, I'm very competitive, too. So Shannon plays Nintendo, because she's good at Mario Party, because that's what we did all the time. Um, we played basketball, and Dan kicked my ass. And I was so upset. Like, my pride went down to the ground. I mean, he was doing the double thing, and I'm over here, like, single-handing it. Going on here. Um, so, anyways, we sat out till I don't even know what time, and I just remember leaving that entire trip, just was completely in awe that my friend found this person. Um, and I just, I feel the love with you guys. Um, it's definitely there, and I'm so happy that, you know, obviously, you guys had your differences at first, but you guys came back. And there's that's that's definitely like a true saying there, you know. Um, 
and I'm super, super happy to be here. I love you guys so much. I was not planning on talking tonight or this entire time, so I'm totally caught off guard. I hate talking in front of people, so don't judge me. Um, so I love you guys. I've been up since 2 a.m. I'm exhausted, so I'm going to give this mic to someone else. I think Mike needs to talk, or Michael. I think I'm going to give it to you. My name's my name's Mike. I'm Sam's dad. I also bowl. I suck at it. Dan beat me the one time we bowled. It was sad. Should have let me win. <laughs> oh well. Um, I don't have any great stories. I'm just so happy to be here and that you two guys are together. It, it just seems like you guys mesh so well. And I'm very happy for you. We're happy for you. Congratulations.